About five years ago, I wrote what is now the True Monetary and Banking History video series. I was still in the anger phase at the time, and while I'm still appalled at the lack of education about our money, I have mellowed a bit. In that video series, I explained that it is a feature of our debt-based monetary system to build up more total debt than our national income can support. This results in the need to reset the system on a long-term but a fairly regular basis. Though there have been many resets that have perpetuated the current cycle, such as closing the gold window, the plaza accord, and quantitative easing, the last full reset dates back to the period from 1933 to 1945. I warned that a reset was going to be necessary in the not-so-distant future. The overriding theme in both resets and actions to perpetuate the debt-based monetary system is the government and the banks gain power and get stronger. I gave a solution that seemed reasonable based on this theme. The solution was called the e-dollar. It is actually an old idea that phased out cash while allowing negative interest rates, but with a modern crypto twist. Take a look at part 7 of the series for a full explanation. I still believe this is a possibility, but I'm not so sure the powers in the government, particularly those of the elected variety, really understand our monetary system and how it maintains their power structure. Thus, they may not see the need for the e-dollar, despite the fact that it would likely maintain the status quo. So now, there may be an opportunity for them to unknowingly cede power over money that has been gained by governments over the past century and a half. In a later post, I outlined how the solution could be provided by precious metals, but have since realized that the chances of such a shift are nil. There are a couple of recent influences that have compelled me to write of another possible solution. The first was reading Ray Dalio's free book, Principles for Navigating Big Debt Crisis. In his book, Ray outlined exactly what I laid out in the true monetary and banking history. He calls the situation we are in the end of the long-term debt cycle. Here's a quote from the book. With Monetary Policy 1, interest rates, and Monetary Policy 2, QE, at their limits, the central bank has very little ability to provide stimulus through these two channels. In other words, monetary policy has very little gas in the tank. This typically happens in the later years of a long-term debt cycle, for example, 1937 and 38, and now in the United States, which can lead to pushing on a string. When this happens, policymakers need to look beyond QE to new forms of monetary and fiscal policy characterized by monetary policy number three. This is how Ray defines the four tools to cause what I would call a reset of the monetary system. An increase in debt-financed fiscal spending. This doesn't sound like anything special compared to what we have been doing. An increase in debt-financed fiscal spending where the Treasury isn't on the hook for the debt because the central bank can print the money to cover the debt payments. This is closer to pure debt monetization, which is pretty scary, but the next two are what really caught my eye printing money and doing direct cash transfers to households, what is now known as helicopter money. Big debt write-down accompanied by big money creation, or the year of the Jubilee, as occurred in ancient Rome, the Great Depression, and in Iceland. I'd say, done in sufficient quantities, these radical solutions would constitute a reset. The fact that someone of Mr. Dalio's stature came to the same conclusion I had reminded me that I probably wasn't wrong back in 2014, but just a bit early. This realization, coupled with my recent research into the Hedera Hashgraph cryptocurrency, allowed me to come to a far more optimistic solution than the e-dollar. In this solution, new players may gain some power in the monetary shift that would solve the need for the long-term debt cycle reset. I had toyed with the same idea with Bitcoin and closely related cryptos, but due to technical and environmental limitations, I had shelved the thought. But when introduced to Hedera, with its scalability, efficiency, and proper governance, this option came screaming back. The solution is quite simple. If an economy builds around a platform like Hedera, and or other similar cryptocurrencies, it could take market share from the dollar economy. Naturally, the value of the Hedera token, the HBAR, and those other cryptos would go up. This gets us to how it would solve the long-term debt cycle reset. 
As this next generation of crypto takes a more significant portion of the economic activity, the value of fiat currency, including the dollar, would drop. Dollar-denominated debt would become more manageable, and over time could come more in line with what incomes could sustain. As long as the crypto economy grew by more than the fiat dollar economy contracted, we could possibly go through a reset in this fashion without a contraction of the overall economy. It would also add a much-needed check and balance to the debt-based monetary system that precious metals have struggled to provide as of late, and I would certainly appreciate another viable monetary option to use in the modern world. There is no doubt that crypto taking over a chunk of world commerce would be risky, but Ray Dalio's suggestions and the e-dollar certainly would carry risk as well. I'd love to try a solution to our predicament where some new players take some power from the old guard. If you would like more information about Hedera, watch my Hedera Hashgraph bullcase video before taking a deep dive with the countless other resources at Hedera.com and Hashgraph.org.